Hi, this is Matt McIntosh and this is video two of the three that I'm making with regards to sculpting a head in ZBrush. So I'm just carrying on from where I left off with that kind of weird monkey shaped head that I had before. Um, so all that's in the scene are the two eyeballs and the basic shape of the head. And as you can see at the moment, all I'm using is the move tool and the smooth tool to start bulking out the shape of this head. <clears throat> so yeah, um, what I'm going to start by doing is, is just saying that when I actually sculpt something, um, I don't tend to start out, say at the top of the head uh, and, and sculpt that and get that perfect and then start making my way down and work on the eyes and then work on the mouth and work on the nose and then and then work my way through the rest of the body. Um, I tend to kind of work on a little bit, such as the neck, uh, maybe even the ears, um, back of the head, things like that. Um, and it's wherever I see an issue, um, I will actually start sculpting on that bit. So as you can see from this, I'm just at the back of the head, uh, I'm jumping over to the ear now. I'm going to start pulling a, a bit of that around. Um, and I'm just using the move tool to do that with. Um, and yeah, now onto the jawline uh, to start bulking that out. And just by working on it bit by bit like that, you can start to build up this overall form of a character head. Um, one thing that I would say, though, that you need to do on a regular basis is just turn your model around on screen. Uh, so that you can see how it's how it's actually looking from certain angles. Um, one thing that I have seen in the past that students do is is basically the work on a, uh, an object just from the side view, and it looks perfect. And then when you turn it to the front, it's elongated or there's just things wrong with it. Um, and, and that kind of links back into reference material as well. Um, if you if you've only got good examples of say the front of the the head, um, you're not going to end up with a the perfect shaped nose because you need that profile view. You need to see it from the side, or even a three quarter view like I've currently got my head, um, just so that you can see the angles of things and and how um, parts of the the head sit together. So make sure you've got plenty of reference when you start making. Um, any sculpture okay so as you can see at the moment I'm just building up a little bit of information with regards to the nose um, just again using the clay tool and that move tool <clears throat> okay so um, what I'm gonna do is just um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna kind of refine this a little bit more before I jump into using some Dynamesh. Um, but basically what Dynamesh will let me do is rebuild the, um, the overall object. Uh, so as you can see at the moment, I can get rough shapes going on, but there's areas around the nose, the mouth, where you can clearly see the polygons that are in use. Um, okay, so that, that's, that's a perfect example of how the elongation from one side it can look okay from one view, but as soon as you turn round, it, it, it's overextended, yeah? So just make sure you turn round your model on a regular basis. Um, as I was saying, yeah, the, the Dynamesh aspect basically will rebuild that mesh so that you get rid of some of those faceted edges that's going on. So if you look at where the, um, the actual nose is at the moment, uh, there's a lot of polygon build, um, stretching there. And when you use Dynamesh, it will basically rebuild that with more information in it. Um, but before you start making use of Dynamesh, try to get the most out of your model as you possibly can. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of work a little bit into the neck. Um, if you are making a female character, don't go overboard with the thickness of the neck. Um, I've seen people put in um, sharp objects uh, into the neck area, or they've built up the, the thickness of that neck. And 
if it's a female character, you're just going to end up with it looking like there's an Adam's apple in there. Uh, so basically what you need to do with that is make it a little bit more kind of refined, make it a little thinner. Um, and yeah, don't, don't have uh, the massive kind of sternocleidoid uh, mastoid going down the side of the neck, standing out. Um, also thin out the back of the head as well. Okay, so yeah, it's it's slowly starting to come together. I mean, I've only been sculpting for five minutes. I've got a rough shape. Uh, and I, what I'm doing is just looking at flat, um, getting rid of some of these flat edges that are around this mesh. So again, that just comes from rotating around your model and seeing if you can identify any issues. Yes, yeah, so just a little bit more work on this. <clears throat> okay, the back of the head's a bit flat at the moment. But it, it's starting to get there. It's starting to get there. Okay. It's kind of looking a bit like a meek on at the moment with a bulbous head. Um... But what I'll do is I'll I'll try and work a little bit more into these uh, these eyelids. Just build a little bit of information in there. So yeah, just giving a bit of the uh, kind of eye socket information there. Giving a bit of a, a lower lid. Blending it all back using that smooth tool. Okay. That's probably enough at this moment in time. Um, it does kind of look like there's massive bags on this this particular head. Um, uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm getting a bit of splitting um, going on. So that that's where, you know, the, the Dynamesh aspect can come into play of rebuilding the mesh, but I just want to get a little bit more information before I actually make use of that feature. So I'm just going to blend that back. Build in this nasolabial fold. Bit of the cheekbone. And then use the smooth tool to just blend it back. Yeah, that, that cheek's a little bit pronounced, but it's not too bad. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I'm going to use the move tool to just pull the nose into a bit of shape. Okay, it's uh, kind of a bit crooked there, so give it a little bit more refinement. And to build up the nostrils, I'm just using the clay tool on the side of the nose. To give a little bit of information and then I'm going to use the clay tool to push back and yeah you can really see that kind of faceted aspect going on um, but try and get the most out of it before you actually start converting meshes a uh, little bit of information for the lips here and yeah I think I think it's time to make use of that dynamesh so you need to delete your uh, lower um, subdivisions uh, if you play around with the resolution that will affect how the uh, the overall mesh kind of works so I'm just going to turn the polyframe on so that you can see um, this is it in its original format and this is it with Dynamesh at 128 resolution so I'm going to turn the resolution up to I don't know, 304 click on Dynamesh and as you can see it's rebuilt that mesh we still got the appearance of the faceted edges, but if we actually looked at the uh, wireframe there, um, that mesh isn't actually there, it's just replicating the, the faceted aspect. So I should be able to actually smooth this, as you can see, and it's starting to get rid of the squared appearance that we have around 
these features. And that's because we've got far more geometry in the actual mesh to make use of. So all I'm going to do here is just blend in this top lip here and just add a little bit more information. We've got a bit of a, an edge there, so blend it back using smooth. And yeah, okay, we've we got a bit of bulk there. So what I'm now going to make use of is the damn standard tool and that allows you to actually cut information into the mesh quite effectively. It allows you to scratch information into the surface. It's pretty good for doing stuff like what I've just done with the mouth. Um, it's good for doing creases in like the, uh, you know, around the edge of the nose or in the eyelid area. Don't go over the top with it. Um, it, it will just look like you, your characters had, had some weird fight with a cat and lost if you go over over it too much using that tool. So just use it sparingly, but it can be an effective tool. Okay, so I'm just going to build up the lip area. <clears throat> it's kind of looking a bit cat-like at the moment. So um, what I think I'll do is... Uh, I'll, I'll work on this top lip a little bit. So all I'm going to do is use the clear tool to just draw in some lips. And this is where the intensity aspect comes into play. And I'm, I'm just going to smooth the top part off. And as you can see, that's quite effective for a, a pair of lips. So because we've got more mesh, um, what I'm now going to do is cut in this kind of crease that goes from the, uh, the edge of the nose right to the corners of the mouth and that's uh, referred to as the nasolabial fold. And with an intensity of 5 on the damn standard tool it works quite effectively. So yeah, as you can see just jumping around areas um, and you know, spotting spotting things that need work. So I'm going to do a little bit on the eyes and just try and uh, bulk them out a bit more effectively because I've now got more mesh to play with for using Dynamesh. I'm going to use the move tool to just pull this eyelid a bit further forward. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, um, I think I think I'll work a little bit on the ears in a moment. Uh, the overall shape's starting to get there, just a little bit of a tweak on the cheekbones there. And this is where the, the three-quarter view comes into play. Something might look fine on the front and side view, um, but you need to just twist it to uh, you know, get a good uh, appreciation of whether it's working in the 3D view. So yeah, uh, in order to start building up the ears, all I'm doing is using the clay tool to, to push back. Uh, so I've got the alt, alt key pressed down and I'm just sculpting into it and using that smooth tool to blend it again. Okay, there's a, a bit of a a weird sort of webbing at the top of the ears here so I'll be using the move tool to just push parts down to give it a little bit more refinement and pull things around to get a bit more of a shape and that's the cool thing with that brush you can just if there's a, an area that you're not overly pleased with you can just refine it you can keep on pushing stuff around um, one thing that I've noticed um, with with students is that they just seem to think as a magic button that you can press and everything's going to uh, pop into place and work perfectly and a lot of a lot of the time with sculpture it is just refinement spot something work on it tweak it a little bit pull it around and just keep doing it just keep turning around your model see if something stands out 
and just refine it. Okay, so after 15 minutes of working from that monkey head, I've got a, a basic kind of face that resembles some sort of human. And from now on, it's just going to be a case of refinement with these uh, basic brushes that I've, I've shown you already. Okay, so you don't need to know all the fancy ins and outs with uh, pinch tools or, uh, you know, clay tools or, or clay tubing tools even. Um, you just need the basics. And if you can get your head around those, um, you should be able to produce some really good work. Um, and then once you're comfortable with those basic tools, then you can start making use of some of the more advanced features. Um, okay, I just need to blend that a little bit out. Uh, yep. Okay. Yeah, so, um, yeah, once you've got your, your head around those basic tools, um, you can you can develop what you, you need to from that. But make sure the basics work first, okay? Okay, this, this person's looking pretty knocked off at the moment, but it is starting to resemble a human. Um, the the thing that, um, <clears throat> that I say in lectures is that the top of the ears should line up with the uh, tops of the eyes, or the eyebrow area even, and the bottom of the ear should actually line up with the base of the nose, or the, the, the bottom of the nose. Um, these ears aren't quite doing that just yet. But, you know, it's all a case of refinement, as I just said. Um, so, if you keep going around things and you spot stuff like that, you can change it later on. All I'm doing at the moment, though, is, is just working on aspects where I, I can get a decent shape of it that I'm happy with. And then once I've got that, if the positioning's not right, Later on, yeah, I can start to pull things down, move it into position, and make sure it does look okay. Okay, so yeah, I mean the earlobes are a, a little bit lower than the nose, and the the eyeballs are a uh, well, the tops of the ears are a little bit lower down than the eyes, but you know it, it, it's getting there. Okay, so um, I'm just going to build up a little bit of information going from the bridge of the nose right round so that we can start to get stuff around the eyes you know for, for building up the eye sockets and just feeding into those cheeks again I'm just using the damn standard to cut a little bit of information and then this tool works really well because you can blend it back so that it will leave a, um, a very thin line there but you can get far more kind of um, defined shapes going on. So you can use the damn standard and then use the smooth tool and it will it will give you a, a nice sort of um, ridge information. Okay, so I'm just going to use it to cut a little bit of a corner of the eye. And now what I'm going to do is introduce you to another tool. So this is the pinch tool. Um, basically what I'm doing with this is I'm just using it to form the edge of an eyelid. Um, use this very sparingly. It's good for the kind of corners of mouths or edges of mouths. So you'll, you'll see that as I'm doing it, the reason that I say use it sparingly is it pulls everything together. Um, so you end up with stretch mesh. So if you've got this going on all over your mesh, you're going to end up with... Um, artifacts going on or just things not working the way that you intend it to but if you just use it for say like the corners of the mouths or you know around the edge of the eyes you can basically um you know give a, a bit of a hard edge there okay so as you can see I've, I've kind of approached it in a slightly different way there um that that's one thing to note with zebrush just because there's the one tool in there, there are different ways of approaching things. Uh, so you can do 
many of the features using different techniques uh, all within the same package okay so yeah just a little bit of a pinch on the edge and we've got that hard edge going around the lip on the top <clears throat> back to the damn standard so we get a bit more refinement on the edge of the nose there it's looking very kind of uh, plastic surgery at the moment Oh, it's getting there for a, a shape of the nose. In fact, it, it, it's looking a kind of uh, a bit Michael Jackson-ish. So, uh, I'll just try and uh, shape it a bit more effectively, I think. Yeah. I'm going to pull that bit down because it, it looks a bit weird. Very snooty, uh, snobbish. Let's give it a bit of a, a rounded aspect okay um, kind of a bit flat from the front so I'll just bulk out the bridge of the nose a little bit there and blend that back <clears throat> and let's see how that looks now okay so that that's that's looking a little bit better than what we had before okay so bottom lip wise i'm just going to uh, kind of bulk this this little bit of an area out you don't have to go overboard with it. But if you are making a female character, then ideally you should be looking to kind of fill out the lips uh, a lot a lot larger than uh, if you're making a male aspect or a male character even. And uh, yeah, I'll just use the damn standard to recut in that mouth because I've lost a little bit of the information. You're just retracing steps here. And a little bit of information for the uh, surface of the lips. And yeah, just cutting a little bit back into that mouth. There you go. So as you can get a little bit more refinement there. Okay, so um, with the nostrils, don't actually make holes in the head because what you'll find is that when you start to um, retopologize stuff, and this this goes for the the eyeballs as well, it just makes more work for itself um, if you actually cut holes into a mesh. So try to leave the information there. Just just use the move tool to push it further back, um, but don't don't cut in uh, holes up or don't chop parts up because. When you do start projecting stuff later on, um, it can cause errors uh, when you start creating normal maps and things like that. Okay, so yeah, I'm not too happy with the uh, top eyelids at the moment. Or well, the bottom ones at the moment. She's uh, she's got very kind of bagged eyes. Uh, so I'm just gonna use the move tool to refine the shapes of these. So when you are when you are refining stuff, you should always be making use of that reference material that I mentioned earlier. So I'm just going to work into the uh, the neck area. So th this muscle 
that I'm working on at the moment is the sternocleidomastoid uh, and basically that allows the head to turn so you do need the information there um, it's one of those kind of muscles that you will see on, on pretty much any kind of model um, but don't go overboard with it don't don't make it stand out like it's you know a really really thick muscle you just need the kind of um, faint indication that there is something there um, and again if you are making a female character then you need to thin that neck area so that it looks a little bit more dainty a little bit more feminine okay so I'm just building out the back section Okay, so <clears throat> I've had a, a little bit of an error there. If you've got a, a brush that's too big, sometimes it can have the effect of, uh, you know, going through the actual mesh. So that, this is a perfect example. If the brush is too big, uh, either zoom in on it or scale your brush down and you should be able to, you know, get rid of that sort of um, issue where you end up with artifacts in your mesh. in this area out I don't need to go over the board to fix that because if I'm using this as a bust I can probably hide a lot of this information underneath any clothes if I uh, if I make anything in future uh, so I'm, I'm not going to spend too long trying to sort that bit out <coughs> excuse me Okay, so yeah, we're we're twenty seven minutes into it, and as you can see, there's a, a reasonable shape now for a human head. Um, what I would say is, I would not be expecting students to be at this standard where, you know, after after twenty seven minutes, you've you've got a very kind of recognizable head as being human. Um, it's it sounds daft, but some of the things that I've seen submitted before are absolute shockers, and they've taken twelve weeks to make that. Um, I've worked in industry, so I can do this stuff a hell of a lot quicker um, than I'd be expecting any any student using this package for the first time to be able to complete their assignment. So if you're watching this video and you're thinking, "Oh my God, that's that's just too advanced" or whatever. Don't stress, it all just comes down to practice and the more practice you can put in, the better you're going to get. Uh, so I would recommend that you do do this as often as possible. Don't try making celebrities because you'll just get disappointed. Um, and the reason for that is if it's your first time using this package, you're not going to be able to produce a, a good representation of that character or that person until you've had some practice on the on the package. Um, that being said, do make use of the photographic reference as much as possible. So maybe take pictures of your, your girlfriend or your boyfriend um, and try to model them. They're not, they're not going to be kind of, uh, you know, major league offended if it doesn't look perfect in the first go. But the reason for using those people is that you can get pictures of them as and when you need them. With a celebrity, if you if you go hunting for images on the internet, there's no guarantee that you're going to get a front side and a back view, um, or a three quarter view. So you need a good consistency of imagery. And when you're starting out doing head sculpts, you need it to be a consistent lighting, consistent size, consistent resolution. So taking pictures of people that you've got easy access to uh, makes your life a lot easier. Okay, so start out with a friend or relative and then you know just get as many practice goes at this as possible uh, and the other thing that i would highly recommend that you don't do is make use of the base mesh heads within zbrush um, it's basically just a starting point that um, you can use to start sculpting on 
it's not going to develop your skills as much as if you build the head yourself from scratch okay so please avoid using those um, and you will become a much better sculptor if you just start from scratch each time like I have with this one okay so um, it's not looking very feminine at the moment um, my voice is starting to give way a little bit on this video so what I think I'll do in a minute or two is probably call it a day on this one um, and in the next video I'll be looking at kind of making the uh, the face and the, the features a little bit more feminine but yeah the main thing that you should have taken away from this video is one make use of reference two make use of the clay tool the move tool and the damn standard but apart from that it is just a case of going around your model looking for areas that could be refined refining those areas and then going around your model again to find other parts that need a little bit more work so as, it, as I can just see here the back of the neck not quite right just pulling that into position using the move tool and checking around again using the smooth tool to blend it in and yeah it's, it's still got a fair bit to go but it is definitely getting there now um, <clears throat> I think I'll just work a little bit more into this this ear get the shape of that right before I uh, finish up on this video so I'm just going to use the dam standard to cut a little bit of information in the back there might be a bit too intense that yeah. and then just use the smooth tool to blend it back and you get a bit of a fold going on Yeah. right um i think that'll do for this video so thanks for listening and tune in for the next one